Thanks, Christy, and thanks to the RIU team for the opportunity to present again. I've presented it under other guises in the past, but uh, first time at RIU to present the, the Emerson story. Uh, there is a bit of a disclaimer, and I will be making some forward-looking statements, uh, which I can actually now make, uh, which do include some financial um, statements going forward um, as a result of work that we've done over the last 10 months on the projects. So a bit of a, a summary of where, where we'll go through and, and why the Emerson story is a little bit different to, to a lot of other stories. For, firstly, very high grades. We've got high resource grades uh, and 300,000 ounces at over five grams uh, in the Tennant Creek mineral field. We also have ore reserves already defined uh, on our projects, a modest 80, 000, just under 80,000 ounces at 4.7 grams. And I'll come to why that modest uh, 80,000 ounces is, is of, of significance uh, during the presentation. We are in the right address both for both of our main project areas in Tennant Creek uh, in the Northern Territory and Macquarie Arc um, in, uh, in New South Wales. We are well funded uh, with exploration funding through joint venture projects as well as our own uh, cash reserves as well. A very experienced board and management team and a very clear pathway to, to growth for the projects. And all of that partly as a result of a, a royalty strategy that we, a joint venture and royalty strategy that we, uh, we've undertaken. So as I mentioned, two main areas of focus, Tennant Creek and New South Wales. Now, I'll spend most of the presentation talking about uh, Tennant Creek, but being in New South Wales, I can't, uh, I can't ignore our projects uh, in the Macquarie Arc. We hold, hold around 500 square kilometres in Macquarie Arc, uh, really in three main areas. Uh, the Keola area to the south, which is uh, just to the south of, of, um, of Cadia. Uh, the Wellington project to the north near the Boda discovery uh, from Alcane. And the Keola firefield area to the, to the west, very close to Rio and Rio's uh, Scandium deposit that they're um, ex aggressively uh, progressing, as well as Rimfire, uh, who announced recently some very high grade Scandium um, uh, exploration results out to the west. But the main area of focus really has been and will continue to be in the short to medium term uh, the, the areas up in Tennant Creek, up in the Northern Territory. So for those who don't know the area, halfway between Darwin and, and Alice Springs, Tennant Creek, it has been a, a hotbed of exploration and, and a pegging rush over the last five, five or so years. We've been there since 2007, and so we hold what we consider the best ground. And the reason we believe it's the best ground is quite, quite simply, having been there for so long, we've managed to secure the ground where there isn't um, cover. A lot of the exploration activities and pegging that has undertaken by a number of the large companies, uh, BHP, Rio, South32 and others, uh, Newmont and others, um, has all been to the, to the east of, of our ground, which you can see there. All of that area there is underneath the Georgina Basin uh, and therefore undercover. Undercover exploration, as we all know, is expensive and high risk. Where our projects are, we are to the, to the west, uh, centred around the, the town of Tennant Creek, and <coughs> excuse me, um, and the, the deposits are either outcrop or subcrop and are far easier to explore than, than further to the east. So why Tennant Creek? And a little bit of history about Tennant Creek. There's been a five and a half million ounces of gold produced out of Tennant Creek um, over the, the last hundred odd years. The deposits, there is a real challenge with them, and the challenge is the size. So that, this, is a num this is five of the 18 deposits just listed here. And you can see the size of the deposits. And this is in plan view, the size of these things. Geographically, they're really quite small. In, in cross section, again, geographically quite small. In long section, a number of them do have depth continuity. And so why would we be wanting to explore for these deposits that are, are modest, in, modest in size? And the answer is really very simple, grade. Historical production from these deposits. Warrigo, over 1.4 million ounces of gold was produced at just under nine grams plus copper. Noble's Knob produced at 16 grams of, and for over a million ounces. Gecko, 4% copper and gold. White Devil, 760,000 ounces at, at just under 15 grams. 
And uh, the smallest little thing down the bottom here, the Juno deposit, you can see how small that is. 57 grams. That's the prize. Now, I'll come back to how we're exploring for these type, these uh, deposits that are geographically small but incredibly high in value later on in the presentation. But just keep in mind that these deposits are relatively modest in size. So our tenement package itself, we held around 1,800 square kilometres around Tenant Creek and we've joint ventured a large portion of that area out to a partner called TCMG, a private, private company backed by a number of PE private equity groups uh, Tembo being the largest shareholder of, of, of TCMG. TCMG have already secured a processing plant and they are, they are, pro they are approaching uh, the development and, and financial final investment decision for the project. Uh, and the, the model that they're using is, is a hub and spoke model whereby they have a central processing facility and truck in from these deposits to that facility. They've completed a pre-feasibility study, they've completed regulatory approvals, Accommodation village has been secured and they're in the process of, of finalising the, the financing of it and we are hopeful that they'll be moving through to the construction uh, in, the, uh, in the coming months. As a result of that joint venture, TCMG are funding $10.5 million on our ground. There's around $3.8 million remaining to be spent so that for them to then earn their interest. As part of that exploration, there's also a mining joint venture where we get 6% gross production royalty from the projects. That's an amazingly high royalty rate. Two, two and a half percent is normal, so 6% is an amazing royalty. And I'll, I'll come to the value proposition there. There's also minimum production hurdles that they have to, have to achieve, and if they don't achieve them, they need to pay uh, as if they have. So I'll go going through that in a little bit more detail. It provides an opportunity for us for a low risk development and funded through to production with no exposure to costs either operating or capital costs. We are free carried, as I mentioned, with a 6% gross production royalty. About six weeks, six or eight weeks ago, we announced the first reserve in the Tenor Creek mineral field uh, for the last 20 years. As a result of achieving that reserve, and it is a modest reserve of approximately 80,000 ounces, just under 80,000 ounces, that royalty that we will receive is worth $16.5 million. So, from a modest 80,000 ounces, there's substantial low risk returns that we will receive as a result of this strategy. So the question and the takeaway on this slide really is two key numbers to, to take in mind. Around the, around the 80,000 ounces and the fifth, six, sorry, $16 million. In addition to the, the reserves, there's additional inferred resources inside the mine plans that are not, is not included in that royalty valuation. And the minimum production hurdles, as, we, as I mentioned earlier, is 6% of 60,000 ounces needs to be uh, delivered in the next couple of years. If it's not delivered, they need to pay as if it has been. And at today's price, that equates to approximately $12.7 million. So a, a solid low risk return coming towards Emerson. So how are we gonna grow that, that, that 80,000 ounces? It really is just the start for us. The field has had an amazing history of development on relatively modest size resources and then growing from there. The White Devil Mine, for example, started with a reserve of 40,000 tonnes at approximately 16 grams and it went on to mine 1.6, 1.7 million tonnes and 760,000 ounces of gold recovered. And you can actually know exactly the, the, the date it was closed. It was closed in, in 1999. And that was the, uh, the lowest gold price um, for the last 10 years or last 30 years. There's been a tenfold increase in the gold price since, and we're yet to evaluate uh, the opportunity around White Devil. That's part of the, where we'll grow the resources going forward. In addition to that, we've also just on Monday announced a resource for our Golden 40 project, a high grade resource. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, 133,000 ounces of gold in resource. A very high proportion of that is in indicated, and with additional development studies that our partners are already undertaking, we expect there will be more reserves uh, converted from that that uh, that resource. And in fact, there's one zone in that deposit 
77,000 ounces, running approximately nine grams per tonne. Now, it's conceivable that with additional development studies, we can add 70 or 80,000 ounces of additional resources. Again, we get a 6% royalty on those resources, on those reserves, and that could equate to another $16 million of, of revenue. And it's just the start. We are continuing to explore the, the region. So that's part of the, the near mine exploration we're undertaking. So how do we find deposits that are geographically quite small? This is an air mag image, and you can see you know, it's quite broad and very difficult to see a number of these small high-grade deposits. So we've undertaken a number of drone surveys, ultra-detailed drone surveys in the district. I'll look at the southern ones, and then I'll move to the northern one after that. And you can see what the historical magnetic images looked like. Fast forward with the drone image, it's chalk and cheese in terms of detail and targeting of these magnetic units and relatively modest sized, geographically, uh, deposits. You can see a, a structural corridor running through, through that area and that's one of the largest areas where there's been a, uh, well over two million ounces of gold mined out of that area. Moving to the north, again, you can't see half of, these half of the deposits you'll see in the next, uh, in the next slide uh, from the AMAG image. Of particular interest, I'll mention Troy and Hermitage. It looks quite different when you look at the drone magnetics. Troy stands out very clearly, as does Hermitage. Jasper Hill does as well. That's a, another area of interest. We're working with the traditional owners to see if we can get access to that area. Um, that will be a, take a, a little bit longer, but we're working through that. Troy is a, a more of a high copper system. And what we've identified there, or the structural corridor, what we've identified at, at Troy is a high copper rich system. 63 metres at 2.5% uh, at copper. So certainly very interesting and needs additional drilling and additional exploration in that area. Moving to the, the Hermitage project, we've done a lot of this drilling, or all this drilling ourselves. We discovered it a few years ago. 119 metres at 3.3, followed up with 94 metres at uh, 2.7 copper and, uh, and 5 grams gold. So again, a traditional, rel relatively modest size geographically deposit, but a very, very high grade and very rich. We've identified an opportunity to, to grow this at depth. Very briefly, I, I won't mention the, the capital structure too much, but uh, we have got a, a very solid board and, uh, and a capital structure and a very supportive shareholder base, which is, which is fantastic to see. And after 17, 18 years, to only have 507, 540 million shares on issue is, is a great result. That's as a result of us going down this joint venture path and royalty path rather than trying to do it all ourselves. So in summary, we are unlocking the high grade, high value deposits in the Tennant Creek mineral field through joint ventures. We have an emerging royalty business with a 6% gross production royalty from our mining joint venture. We've got multiple targets across the field and across New South Wales. We are well funded with $3.2 million of our, of our own funding and $3.8 million of joint venture funds to, to spend in the next few years that will see us towards that first um, minimum production payment uh, in early 2026. So with that, I'd like to, like to thank everyone for your attention and uh, you, any other questions, please feel free to uh, come to our booth, booth 81, where I'm more than happy to have uh, uh, more of a detailed chat. Thanks very much.